in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and it was void, it was dark. 56% of Americans deny that climate change is happening and deny that human beings are causing it. The United States will withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord. The end times is coming, the, the Bible tells us. I don't believe it's something we should get scared about. You want to talk about being good stewards of the environment God created. The greenhouse effect is real and is already... Before we're finished, I think you'll agree that our God is a wonderful God. <laughs> next guest hardly needs an introduction. For years, he was the chief meteorologist at both CARE 11 and then later at WCCO Television. And it is just awesome to have Paul Douglas back in our studio this morning. Thank you. And uh, congratulations on the book. Why did you write a book uh, specifically addressing evangelicals and conservatives about the issue of climate change? The book is really a bridge, an attempt to reframe the climate story in a way that resonates with a big percentage of Americans. Every day is different. Every day is unique. It was the weather that, that tipped me off that something had changed. Weather had always been a symphony, a Beethoven symphony. And suddenly, the weather resembled a second grade talent-free orchestra. I believe we've been loaned an amazing gift. We are tending what's left of Eden. It's Don't panic. It wasn't Just snowing when we came into the studio. I know. Nothing gets past you. Did you know about this? <laughs> yes, I did. Thank you. And had you been actually <laughs> listening yesterday... I should do that. Yeah, there's a little burst. We're going to get a coating here, and it's going to be a two- to four-inch coating over central Minnesota. In the media business, television, radio, print, it's a popularity business, right? And we're out. And you know, if you even whisper the words climate change, you will antagonize 20, 30 percent of the audience. So yeah, the fact that I was talking about this, it might have shortened my television career. I don't know. And at this point, I don't care. A little warmer than it was yesterday here in Columbia, Mississippi. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Have you not seen and have you not heard and watched the news with all of the chaos? of things that is happening on planet Earth, some of this stuff is caused by humanity destruction because some of us decide to use toxic chemicals in God's atmosphere. Anytime man gets so wise and start mixing up all of the chemicals and stuff, they cause problems in the Earth realm. In today's world with global warming, you see where people are doing what? Mixing up what? To make what? A whole lot of what? Didn't the Bible says the love of money is the roots? All evil. He didn't say some of it. The Lord told us how to live on the planet and how to live in harmony with the planet. But are we doing it? Are we doing it? There have been no discussion concerning addressing the off-site contamination by the Environmental Protection Agency or RICO Chemical. Uh, I feel that basically they want to 
cover all of this up and just hope that the problem would just go away and the people would die out and go away as well. When you have the good old boy system controlling, handling, dominating, manipulating poor people, you got problems. And when I look at it, I look at it as environmental genocide. That's the bottom line. Because when you contaminate my land, my air, and my water, and I, know, I don't have any clue or knowledge that you have done so, you have poisoned me silently with the global warming of everything. Oh, yes. uh, mm -hmm. And you see all these storms and stuff. Mm -hmm. We probably wouldn't be dealing with half of this stuff if yeah. um, the earth wasn't warming up and doing what it's doing. Here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, it looks pretty good, but then we see the possibility of some scattered showers on Thursday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Who die never turning their heads, who return as the rising of hope. Amen. Amen. The um, Catholic sisters have a cornfield right on the pathway that the uh, pipeline folks want. With the help of Lancaster Against Pipelines, they, they erected a, a very simple chapel. I'm willing to commit civil disobedience to sit in, in the pathway of the pipeline, and the hope is that there will be some, some breakthrough where it actually stops. So uh, welcome to our, our weekly vigil. Uh, here at the the outdoor chapel that uh, some of the sisters have begun calling the chapel of resistance and I like that a lot. It's funny how I read scripture differently since I've been doing this work. I hadn't realized there was so much civil disobedience strewn throughout through the life of Jesus and the teachings of Jesus. What is lawful but what is right they're not always the same thing. Things are, are pretty divided. I would, I would say that there is a correlation between people who might be more overtly uh, speaking about their patriotism and their allegiance to the flag and having uh, opinions that, you know, climate change is a hoax or climate change uh, isn't a settled issue. I mean, I, I wear an American flag on my um, lapel, um, simply because I'd like to communicate to people that there's uh, many ways to be an American and we can have different opinions, um, but none of us owns the flag or, you know, the, uh, the country. We're, st we're still working to form that more perfect union. We've got a ways to go. 60s is where we're starting this morning here in Alabama. Mild, but as those temperatures warm up throughout the day, eat up that. I was so enamored with the weather uh, that I would spend time on our roof, even through the night sometimes, but always outside, even in the rain. And my friends and family thought I was uh, uh, not quite right, I suppose. Now let's go to a place that has lots of rainfall, like Brazil, especially during the rainy season, January, February, uh, December here. I find out the climate is not changing as rapidly or in the direction even that a lot of claims are being made about. I've been asked to testify before Congress 20 times. One time I was on the stand cross-examined for eight hours. Yet the decision at the end of the day was in favor of the side that I presented. It really, carbon dioxide was not the evil villain it was made out to be in terms of the climate system. Central to my faith is, is that there is a relationship that I understand and believe I have with, uh, with God Almighty. He would consider uh, humans on the planet as his creation for whom he would sacrifice all. If you read Genesis 1, we're the, we're the peak of the pyramid, and Genesis 
chapter two, we're the center of the circle. Humans are, are different than the rest of the environment, therefore are considered more precious. If that's important, that human life is precious, then we should do whatever we can to promote its enhancement, its uh, vigor, its length, its quality. Let's talk about the weather. It might be a beautiful sunny day today, and we can expect much more of the same over the next couple of days. You might want to do some of those outdoor activities. Hey, I will need to see what you have, a public defender or a judge. I want the small barrel. It will shoot a uh, 410 shotgun shell or 45. If I'm traveling on a dirt road, you know, in the heat of the moment, you know, I, with a shotgun shell, you really don't have to worry about hitting them. You know, I believe in being able to protect myself. I believe in self-reliance. I mean, you know, as a Christian, you're taught to rely on God, not the government. And that's why I believe in less government. So all of this comes into play with me, you know, why I decided I wanted to support clean energy. I'm getting ready to go to San Diego Wednesday to uh, give the conservative message for solar at a conference and I had to get some new business cards and you can see from the front it says advocating for free market choices to protect our environment you turn around to the back and it says gives you my talking points energy choice national security and being good stewards of the earth God gave us I believe that there are some groups that had brainwashed conservatives into thinking when they hear solar that they automatically think that's not for me, that's only for sandal wearing, long hair tree huggers. And um, I can assure you, I wear sandals. And I used to have long hair. I had it cut shoulder length now. Uh, and I hug trees, you know, but I, I'm definitely a staunch right wing Christian conservative and I dare anybody to try to paint me as a liberal. This is the kind of weather that makes you want to stay home. In fact, this is the kind of weather that makes you want to move somewhere else. It happened on Monday, so we came, I think, Wednesday or Thursday, and there was still water inside the church. So. Um, up to the doorstep was still full of water when we came in here, but everything had been flooded. So we started the church in May and we had it going um, for roughly five months. And then on September, I think it was September the 11th, Hurricane Irma decided to come through. And it pretty much got everything that we had inside of it. I was kind of stressed out at first, kind of like, where am I going to go, worried and concerned. Um, now I see the, the goodness of God out of it. You know, what God took me out of this and moved me into a nicer place that's in a safer area, and I have more people to minister to and love on. The Bible talks about the end times. There's going to be wars, there's going to be famines, there's going to be droughts, there's going to be floods. There's going to be all these things that happen. And I don't believe that uh, global warming causes this. This is just the Bible fulfilling itself. And these things are going to happen. And as they continue to happen and they continue to get worse, there's nothing we can do to stop it. Still going to see numbers below normal. 41 is the high today. And with the winds, it feels colder. The normal high is 52. So yeah, you're dealing with a very cold air mass. Another quick snapshot of the numbers from 27 to right around 40. If you don't mind, can I open up some prayer? Uh, Creator God, uh, we thank you for an opportunity to gather to think about some of the challenges facing our world. Uh, we lift this up in the name of your risen Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I think we underestimate, especially when us, us in the climate change community, we underestimate the uh, reality that fossil fuels in some ways were the thing that built the United States to be the country that it is.
Right, so I go off to college, right, and get this sort of concern for the environment and for climate change. And, you know, you think you come home and, like, you know, you're going to have this massive disagreement with your parents or your family about everything. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I come home and there's no meat. It's mostly eating plant-based. You know, eating the Western diet is probably one of the biggest factors in uh, global warming. I kind of stand, like, right in the middle of all of the discussion between my father's generation and my son's generation. So, you know, I'm listening to both sides. My grandfather is someone who I see as a role model for faith. But he and I don't see eye to eye on the issue of climate change. Hi. Hey. Good to see you. Yeah, good to be here. I kind of have a problem with this uh, carbon thing. Yeah. I'm a chemist. Mm -hmm. And to me, uh, carbon is... Uh, you know, number mass 14 on the periodic table and comes in about three or four different forms. One of them is diamond, another one is graphite. And, and so why are you talking about carbon and giving it such a bad rap? Carbon footprint makes no sense. I have a concern around, maybe we don't have the luxury of waiting for the models to be refined. Uh, human kind is, is very resourceful. Right. Uh, the planet is uh, resilient, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so these things go on. There's a significant resistance to thinking about environmental issues, of thinking about climate change within the evangelical community. People who feel like they're doing the right thing, and uh, they feel sort of cognitive dissonance when they're told that their lifestyle in, where, in which they're striving to do good is actually bad for the planet. And so they just shut that out because they want to believe they're good people, that they can overcome the structures and strictures of sin. We have to come to a point today where we're not putting more pipelines, we're not drilling for more oil, that we're aware that, that these recent uh, incredibly powerful storms and the uh, wildfires out in California that are raging right now as we speak um, have all uh, been made much worse by, by climate change. They've got local police, they've got state police, and they've got U.S. Marshals out here protecting the private industry who is invading and threatening our communities. We're not the ones who should be ashamed about what's happening here today. They should be. Really interesting, the dynamics here, right? Not been anything quite like this before. Let's go, let's go. Solid as a rock. Solid as a rock. property is leased by Williams. You are now trespassing. We are asking you to leave. arrested but don't do this. I was baptized here August 17th. Please. My mother always called me a heathen child and I'm not. Just please just keep this pace. There'll come a day when you can't ruin any more earth and you're helping to work towards that. This is for your children, this for you, for your grandchildren as well. We love you also. Renewable energy, that's the way to go. Not this. And not this chapel. And I was found here. So, so God, it's
such a bad situation. I'm not sure. When you come down here, you've got to come down here with boldness because it faces chapter 3. Mark 13, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. We're probably going to see more floods. We're probably going to see more hurricanes, more earthquakes. I don't think in my lifetime it's actually going to get super bad, but who knows? It could. No one knows the day, the time, the hour. You know, that's what the word says. So. This is God's biggest natural resource is the sun. I mean, it's, that's conservatism is all about, is liberty and freedom. You can be free by going with solar. Our kids, our grandkids, at some point will ask, what did you know when and what did you do? Here you have, again, the good old white boy system at its worst saying there is no global warming. There is no climate issues because of what they're doing. But in that which is to come, Lord, you have put all things under your feet. Because so they want all like of everything on planet Earth to be heaven for them. And they want you to have a terrible life. Reading right in the name of Jesus. It wasn't very pleasant uh, uh, being in the uh, prison, but you know, I can't, I can't turn around, I can't quit. Coming back here and, and seeing the fence up there, and it's just sad. I, I feel sad to see it. The thing about carbon is that there's more of it than we can imagine. As an evangelical Christian, I also believe in, in hope, in a sense that God is working to ultimately redeem the world, and that the story ends positively, that God accomplishes what God sets out to do.